Hey guys, it's Emma and today we're going to be talking about all the weird things that I do to reduce my waist. First, if you follow me on Instagram, you see that I finally mastered the doggone a coffee. If you've seen this video right here, you know that I totally failed the first time I made it, but I didn't want to give up because I was just so invested in this coffee. So I was inspired by this video because a lot of my other favorite sustainable YouTubers like Shell Bizzle, Get a Mary Johansson, Sedona Christina, and a lot of others were doing this as well. And it got me thinking like, I do a lot of weird things to reduce my waist. But today is just gonna be 10 weird things that I do to reduce my waist. And I think as I think of more and more and more of these, that I'm just gonna keep making more parts to this series. If you like it, let me know, give it a thumbs up. If you have any other weird things that you do, leave them down below, cause I might do them as well. Anyways, let's just jump right into this and start off with the 10 weird things that I do to reduce my waist. The first one, and I actually got this inspiration from Shell Bizzle like a year ago. I've been doing this for a long time now. And that is finding hair ties on the ground to use as my own. This one I just found recently. I found it on the curb while I was mowing our lawn. And honestly, it's not that weird. I mean, it is a little. Hair ties are so easy to sanitize. You can run it through your washer, soak it in bleach if, if you want it to be extra sanitized. Even if you don't wanna use them in your hair, cause honestly, I thought that was kind of weird too at first, you can still pick them up and use them for other things around the house. I use hair ties to keep my cords for my um, hair straightener, my hair dryer together. I use hair ties when I'm like making my own ginger ale and sourdough to keep the coffee filter on top. There's a lot of uses around the house for old stretched out hair ties. And you can even just use hair ties you found on the ground for that. It's important to not necessarily cherish the things that you have, but keep good track of things because hair ties I kid you not, I've probably found like two dozen hair ties on the ground since I've actually just been thinking about picking them up. Most people, like growing up, we probably had hundreds of hair ties. So they meant nothing to me. So if we lost them, who cares? We would probably just buy more anyways. I only have probably about 20 hair ties. I used to have a lot to be able to keep my hair up in a bun before I chopped it and they'd get stretched out easily. So that's why I had so many. Now I really only use about four on a regular basis. When I take my hair down, I put them in my medicine cabinet. When I need to put my hair up, I know exactly where to find them. It might be weird to someone who's new to this lifestyle, but I'm just very conscious about all of my items because I don't want to lose things and I don't want them to end up as litter. Number two is truly a weird one. I don't flush every time. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking already. Yes, I flush the, the nasty stuff. The golden rule, pun intended, is if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. So this, yeah, this is another thing. You have to make sure that everyone in your household is okay with it. But if not, like when I'm home during the day and Daniel's at work, I just do it during the day. And then when he comes home, I start to flush just cause he's not always okay with it. But what we started to do was in the morning when we woke up and right before bed, we would both always go pee. So I'm like, why would we waste two flushes of water when we can just do one flush of water? So in the morning and the evenings before bed, we would just flush once. And now I kind of do it throughout the entire day. That one is truly weird. I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet. Every toilet manufactured since 1994 uses a maximum of 1.6 gallons but a minimum of 1.28. Anywhere from one and a quarter to one and a half gallons of water per flush. Let's just say on average, I save four flushes per day. That's six gallons of water per day. And that's 312 gallons per year, just me. So imagine if everyone reduced the amount of flushes just four times per day. And I guess that's what's crazy too, is that toilets use fresh water. While there's people around the world dying of thirst and not having access to clean water, we're literally just flushing it down the drain even though we don't have to. So the next one I've been doing for a long time, like since I was like probably 10 or 12, is I rewear my clothes a lot. I don't wash my clothes after every wear. Our clothes are not designed to be washed after every wear. Our clothes last a lot longer, the color lasts, the quality lasts. So the less you wash your clothes, the less you have to replace your clothes, as well as the less water that has to be used because Let's just say that you start to rewear half of your clothes instead of washing them. That's half a load of laundry. If you hate laundry like me, that's another plus. The less laundry you have to do, the more you wear your clothes. Don't rewear workout clothes if you just went and ran three miles. That's gross. Wash that stuff, wash stuff that needs to be washed. But full disclosure, I only put on this shirt to film this video. I'm not gonna throw it in the laundry because I only wore it for this video. Like there was, there's no reason the shirt didn't get dirty. Jeans, sweatpants, jackets, sweatshirts, that stuff does not need to be washed. Even if you do wear it for a full day, it doesn't get gross that easily. And that was just something that my, my parents taught me since I was young. Speaking up. 
myself. I was thinking about doing a sustainable things that I learned from my childhood video. If you're interested in that, let me know below. Okay, number four, this one's kind of funny. I will dig recyclables out of trash cans. That one might not sound weird to other environmentalists. I do the same thing at work and people think I'm so weird, but not just like that. I mean, I'm not gonna like go arm deep in a public trash can, that's nasty. But if I see plastic sitting on top of a trash can at the park, I'm gonna take the plastic out and go take it home to recycle. A little weird. It's a little different when it's like in your house or in your apartment or at work or school, but I sometimes do it with public trash cans as well. Oh my gosh, just one last thing on this. This really, 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 really frustrates me when there is a trash can and a recycle bin right next to it. When your recycle bin is right next to your trash can, that is not a convenience issue, that's just lazy. Number five is I don't wash my hair every day. That's not really that weird. I know I know a lot of females who don't wash their hair every day. It's not just for females. But what might be weird is I think it's probably typical like every other day or every two days. I do wash my hair more often now that it's short. It's a little harder to disguise the grease. So I probably wash it like three times a week. But when my hair was long, I was only washing it one time a week. Because it was long, I always had it up. You couldn't see any grease or nasty. This one's... <laughs> This one's really weird. I reuse my flossers. Let me show you what I mean. I'm not gonna show you my flossing, but just in case you've never seen one, here's what it looks like. The the first pack we got from a dollar store, I, I shame my past self from doing that. Ever since the beginning of these, I'm like, it's not broken and you can just wipe the stuff off. And I reuse these for days at a time until they break. I'm not the only one either. A couple of the other ladies I mentioned, I'll leave all their videos and channels linked down below if you wanna check them out, by the way. Not necessarily with flossers, cause obviously these are not environmentally friendly. I hate these things and I'm never buying them again. But even with their environmental floss, like their biodegradable floss even, they still reuse it just because the less you're consuming, the less you're contributing. So I do clean it after every use, but I do reuse it for multiple days at a time. Let me know down below which one you think is the weirdest. This is all normal to me. <laughs> when most people scoop out their cat poop, they probably put it in the trash can, but then your trash can gets smelly and then you throw out a bag, even if the bag is only a quarter or a half full. I'm not about that. I scoop the cat litter into a Walmart bag, but even then the Walmart bag is only like a quarter full and that's still wasteful in my mind. So I call it Walmart. It's just the general plastic bags that you get at a grocery store. I just tie the plastic bag. I put it in a small trash can and then I put a piece of wood over it and then I set it out on our balcony. And that's just because I don't want to go through like two plastic bags a week when I could just go through one plastic bag like every two weeks. Saves a lot of plastic bags. And then I leave it outside until it's time to take all of the trash in the house out to the road because again, I don't wanna put that smelly bag in our main trash and then take that trash out when the bag is not full. I hope that all makes sense. I'm just maximizing the use of a bag. I hate when people throw out trash and they only use half the bag. That is so wasteful. Number eight is that I pick up stuff from the side of the road in people's trash and I use it in my own home and sometimes I even donate it if it's in good condition. This is my form of dumpster diving because I, I can't dumpster dive here. Every week we have a bulk trash pickup day and I found the most ridiculous things on the side of the road. There's actually stuff in this room. Cat house, end table right here. Our entire office is furnished. Two desks, three chairs, two cabinets. Some of the art that I've made in my house, I've made on wood that I found on the side of the road. And I've also donated a lot of stuff. I found bags of perfectly good clothes. Of course, I go through everything before I take it to the thrift store. I go through, I make sure it's not torn, dirty, got bugs, anything gross. But there has been so much stuff that I found on the side of the road that I take to donate because people are too lazy to go themselves. <laughs> One man's trash is another man's treasure. I can't stand seeing all this great stuff go to landfill. Yeah, number nine, I don't always use soap when I wash the dishes. Like those dishes I just made for this, nothing's really that dirty. So I just do a little rinse. I mean, I still like use a washcloth or a brush to scrub it clean, but I don't use soap. I typically only use soap for things that are greasy or things that have like really caked on stuff that really do need a good scrubbing. I guess that's one of the perks about not eating meat. And I actually did talk about that in this video, 30 reasons to go vegan. You don't have to use soap on everything if you're not consuming animal products because your fruits and your vegetables and like my coffee, there's nothing in it that's gonna bring any diseases into my house. So I don't have to use soap on everything. I mean, it makes it so much easier. It saves a lot of water. It saves a lot of soap. I don't know if this one's necessarily weird, but, but I don't use tin foil and plastic wrap to cover 
things. But say for example, I'm making bread and I need the dough to rise. Most recipes will say cover it in plastic wrap. I just cover it in a really thin towel. I mean the bowl, of course, the dough is in a bowl. I do still use plastic wrap. Like if I do need to cover the dough itself, I try not to do that. And if I do, I reuse the plastic wrap. Yeah, in those cases, I just cover it with a damp, wet towel instead. Same with my banana bread. Most people will cover the banana bread like the loaf pan in tin foil, which is fine, but tin foil doesn't stay on very well. And it tears really easily, so it's hard to reuse. So instead, I use the same thin towel to cover my bread pan, and then I just tie it in a cute little bow. It looks a lot more pleasing on my counter than a lump of tin foil as well as it's reusable. And honestly, we eat the banana bread so fast that we probably don't even need to cover it. <laughs> Cause I've done both tin foil and the towel. I think the towel works just as fine. That's all I have for today's video. 10 weird ways that I reduce my waste in my daily life. If you have any other weird ways, leave them down below. Of course, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up to let me know if I should make more videos in this series. Cause I'm sure I'll think of more ways. <laughs> If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out my Instagram and my blog. They'll be linked down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now all my weird, my, my oddities are on the internet. Normalize those weird things and make them not so weird and maybe inspire people to do them as well. If you've been here for a while and you didn't know, I do bloopers at the end of all of my videos. If you are new here, stay tuned for them, as well as don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for post notifications. It would really make my day. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to share it with others. And until next time, remember that the small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Let's just say that you start to rewear half the amount of clothes that you, let's just start to say, let's just. <laughs> Number nine. Thank <laughs> you.